Hello, I am Bishop Earl Boyer of the Diocese of Lansing. I invite you to join me in seven brief meditations on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We will be reflecting on these seven gifts through the lens of seven different scriptural characters. We have received these gifts in baptism and confirmation. May these Bible accounts help us to let the Spirit be alive in our hearts and minds and souls. St. Timothy was certainly no St. Paul. Paul had left Timothy in charge of the church in Ephesus and now saw a need to write two letters to Timothy in order to buck him up. Paul called Timothy his true child in the faith, but recognized that Timothy was a bit shy, too self-conscious about being young, and not in the best of health. Paul tells Timothy to be a leader. He does so by reminding him to live out the piety he had received from the Holy Spirit. Now don't get me wrong, Paul liked Timothy a lot. Timothy had become a Christian because of the faith of his grandmother Lois and his mother Eunice, even though his father was a pagan. Timothy left home and followed Paul. Timothy helped Paul write some of his letters. Timothy had even gone on several important missions for Paul, visiting other churches and solving disputes. But for some reason here in Ephesus, he was forgetting his role, what he was supposed to be about and Paul had to remind him. St. Timothy had been filled not with a spirit of timidity, writes St. Paul, but with a spirit of power and love and self-control when he had been designated to lead the church at Ephesus. It is holy piety or reverence which Paul wants Timothy to put into action so that he can be a leader. Piety is not about going around with your hands folded, though that is not such a bad thing. It is really not about how you look on the outside. Rather, piety is all about relationships. Piety gives us the power to live our lives in a right relationship with God, who is the Father of all, and thus also in a right relationship with all others, with the world, with ourselves. What was Timothy facing and what do we face which requires this great gift of the Spirit? First of all, this gift of piety helps us to live in a right relationship with God. We have received our faith from our parents and from our grandparents and from our teachers, just as Timothy learned from his mother, from the scriptures, and from Paul himself. That faith teaches us that God is our Father and that we owe God. What is it that we owe him? All that we can give to God is what he asks of us, and he asks us to worship him. And how shall we worship him? We can only worship as Jesus has shown us, the Mass. Jesus gave us the Mass in order for us to worship the Father. And Jesus said, do this in memory of him. The Mass is the most perfect form of worship that there is. God wants to be worshiped by this perfect sacrifice of his son, Jesus. So this, so this is where we start. Now I know that there are a million temptations to pull us away from the worship of God. We are tired, we are bored, we are busy, we are lazy. This gift of piety of recognizing our correct relationship with God will help us fight these temptations and give God what is his due, true worship in the spirit by participating in Sunday mass. Not because we are entertained by it, but because that is the most perfect sacrifice we can give to God, the sacrifice of Jesus himself. Secondly, this gift of piety helps us to live in a right relationship with the world. Timothy had to confront heretics who were teaching that the world was evil. How could it be evil? Certainly we believe, as did Timothy, in a good God who created and redeemed this good world. Therefore, we who have this gift of piety know how to respect the world as created by God, as governed by God. The world is not out there to be destroyed by us, to be misused by us, to be our plaything. Rather, we are but stewards, and God, our Father, has placed the care of his universe into our hearts. Now I know that we are all tempted at times to recreate the world in our own images. 
This relational gift of piety will help us to live in this world as God-given and not our creation. Thirdly, this gift of piety helps us to live in a right relationship with others, especially those in authority. Timothy was timid and did not know how to exercise authority in Ephesus. Paul had to remind him to speak the truth, to keep his eyes on God, to live with a pure heart, and to be gentle and kind. We too receive this gift in order to live in the church and to grow in holiness. Now I know that we are all tempted to disobey, to listen to the teachings of the church only when we agree with her, and to have little respect for our government and its leaders. But the gift of piety calls us to pray for all those who exercise authority over us, to live peaceably with one another, never to take advantage of others or to mock them, but to care for all and especially the poor in our midst. And to remember this simple truth, that if God is father of us all, then we are all brothers and sisters. Finally, this gift of piety helps us to live rightly in relationship to ourselves. Paul told Timothy to train himself in piety, but he also reminds Timothy that all who desire to live a pious or reverent life in Christ, Jesus, will be persecuted. This means, my brothers and sisters, that we will need to fight against the devil every day of our lives under the leadership of Jesus. Now I know that we are all tempted to want to live our own lives, to be our own persons, but this gift of piety in the Holy Spirit gives us the strength to live as Christians, to struggle daily against sin and evil, to fight the good fight, and to live a life worthy of our calling as followers of Christ. We need this gift just as Timothy did. We may think we, we too are frail or young or timid. Paul would tell us, as he told Timothy, buck up and live the life of piety you have received in the Holy Spirit.